Guys, I took one for the team here, and I watched The Notebook. Now, I haven't seen The Notebook since I was a kid. My mom loved The Notebook, and I decided to watch it. All right, I'm just going to summarize this movie real quick. Notebook, it's two old farts, they're in an old folks home. The old guy, he's telling the story to the girl, and it jumps to the past, and it's Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams, and they're in love and shit. That's the movie. Look, I like to give movies the benefit of the doubt. I say, look, this movie, it's not my demographic. I'm a man, the demographic is for women. Uh, I'm a bit of a cold-hearted person. This movie is for lovey-dovey people. I give movies the benefit of the doubt. I understand not every movie is for me. And I've done that so far in this love you know? Like, uh, it's Titanic, it's not for me. I, I still, it's like, okay, fine, you, you win, you did it. I cannot understand how anyone could like this movie. This is not a good movie. This is a bad movie. And I get why it was successful. The reason why it was successful is, you know you go to the pharmacy, and at the pharmacy, they don't just sell drugs. They sell, like, all these shitty books. And the books, they have, like, some girl walking on the beach, and the title will be something corny, like, Love by the Beachside. And you're like, who the fuck reads that shit? This movie is that. Okay? Turns out a lot of people read crappy pharmacy books. Okay? And it turns out a lot of people love The Notebook. It's the same demographic, just different forms of media. You're going from books to movies. That's what The Notebook is. That said, it's not good, but I understand why it's popular. I hate how things work in this movie, if that makes any sense at all. I just hate the romance in here. It's such a bad romance. Guys, I'm gonna give you life advice. This is my life advice from me to you, okay? You don't want to date a girl who's never dated a guy before, okay? Let some other guy do that job for you. You want a, a girl who's been through uh, maybe like six or seven romances before getting to you. Okay? You're going to say, Paul, why would you do that? You're increasing the risk of STDs. <laughs> no, you're saying, Paul, why? Because, uh, same thing with guys. It's not exclusive to girls. Girls, you shouldn't go out with a guy who's never been with a girl before. But you learn so much in that first romance, and in the second one, and in the third one. You just don't behave like normal people in the first romance, Okay? And that's so true about Rachel McAdams in this movie. She is so crazy. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan Gosling, you're a good-looking dude. And Rachel McAdams in this movie is very good-looking. But why would you put up with her? Like, I don't get it. She's, she's got multiple personality disorder in this movie. There's a part where they're rowing in this movie. They're rowing on a boat. And obviously, Ryan Gosling is doing all the rowing, okay? Because Rachel McAdams is a spoiled brat in this movie. Ryan Gosling has to build the house from scratch, and not only that, but he has to be the one rowing her freaking ass across the river. But that's the least of the problems. It starts raining, and as it's raining, Rachel McAdams starts laughing like she's fucking Dr. Evil. She's just like... <laughs> And you're like, okay, that's a little odd. And then, flip of a dime, she starts giving shit to Ryan Gosling. Like, why haven't you contact me, contacted me this whole time? Why haven't you contacted me this whole time? And she starts pushing him and hitting him. And I'm like, Ryan, you're a Canadian beauty. You're the sixth wonder of the world. You're a beauty. Why do you put up with this? And then he finds himself in a perfect situation, okay? He's, uh, he's uh, grizzled, he's got a beard, he's doing whatever the fuck he wants, he's single, and every so often, a, a widow will drive to his house and have sex with him, and then she'll leave. This is every guy's dream. He's living the American dream right now. 
He's living the American dream. And what does he do? He throws it all away to go back to Rachel McAdams. I mean, come on. Are you crazy? Ryan, you had it in the bag. You were living the life. You could do whatever you want. And at night, you could shtuck. I don't understand this movie. And I would understand this movie if Rachel McAdams wasn't portrayed like such a like a crazy person. Like, she really is a crazy person in this movie. Like, her emotions are all over the place. Uh, there's a part where Ryan Gosling uh, wants to leave Rachel McAdams. They break up. They break up several times in this movie, but the first time they break up, uh, she's like, She's like, get back here! Get back here! And she starts hitting on the car, and then she's like, oh, I hate you! I hate you! Come on, baby, come on, come on. Just come back, please, please. And I'm like, dude, this girl, she's acting like a crackhead. It's like Ryan Gosling is her crack. She's like, come on, babe. Come on. Just come back here, Ryan. Just come back here. Please, please, just come. And I'm like, the whole time, I'm like, Why? I would put a restraining order on this woman. Like, I would. I would. Girls, I know you like this movie, but you gotta understand the guy perspective in this movie. I'm a guy watching this movie through the lens of a man. Girls, this doesn't make guys want to date you. If this is a movie that you think is good, and you take your guy to go see this, if a girl drags me to the movie theater to see this movie, I'd like seriously reconsider things. Because if this is something that she romanticizes, oof, there's going to be some trouble. There's going to be some troubles. I'm telling you, this is true. Other than that, you know what? The only parts I did like in this movie were the parts with the old farts. Hey, I made that rhyme. Dr. Seuss right here. Parts with the old farts. I think that was from his acclaimed uh, book, Green Eggs and Ham. Will you do it with the parts? Will you do it with the farts? No. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. But yeah, I like the part with the old people. People think it's a little schmaltzy and unrealistic that they would die at the same time in the end. I don't mind that. The movie kind of isn't realistic. The movie opens with Ryan Gosling uh, doing some acrobats in a Ferris wheel. So uh, it already broke all reality by that point. So the fact that they died together, it, it plays out like a fairy tale. I get it. It's like a Romeo and Juliet story. Not everything in Romeo and Juliet is very realistic. This whole movie did remind me very much of Romeo and Juliet. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know the story of Romeo and Juliet, uh, there's been many renditions of it, but basically, Too Long Didn't Read, it's about uh, a guy and a girl, they fall in love, and literally everything around them goes to shit, and makes they make everyone else's life miserable, but they're in love, so you just go with it. And that's the same thing with this movie. Uh, James Marsden is married, or going to marry, Rachel McAdams, and Rachel McAdams just leaves James Marsden. Why? I don't know. James Marsden was a great guy. He's handsome. He was in the war. He was well accomplished. He was a distinguished gentleman. He didn't deserve to get his heart broken. He didn't deserve to get cheated on. The movie doesn't even acknowledge the fact that Rachel McAdams treated him like shit. Same thing with Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling is shtooking this widow, and all of a sudden, he stops shtooking her and starts shtooking Rachel McAdams. And these characters, their feelings aren't taken into account. The movie wants you to root for Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams, but they, they cheat on people. I don't like a cheater. That, this is stupid. This whole movie is so stupid. They're ruining everyone else's life. But they're in love, so it's just you keep going with it. They're in love, let them be, they're in love. I'm like, I get you're in love, but do you have to make everyone else's life miserable? Like, James Marsden, uh, he had a wedding, and all of a sudden he's like, okay, guess I'm not getting married. Like, guess my fiancé cheated on me. 
Okay. Like, these characters are assholes. I hope women realize that the characters in this movie are not good people. Like, they're assholes. And, again, I say this in every of my film reviews. I don't mind if you make a movie about an asshole. I love a movie like Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, Jordan Belford in that movie, not a great guy. Biggest scumbag ever. But the movie does not romanticize Jordan Belford. They say, this is not good behavior. There is a point to him acting like that, and the character uh, gets the consequences of his actions. At the end, he's basically broke. And in this movie, they don't do that. These characters act like assholes, but the movie just goes along with it because they're in love, and th their decisions never come back to bite them in the ass. So it's like, why am I watching this? This movie is not good, guys. Please, do not let your kids watch this movie. Do not let your girlfriend watch this movie. Do not let your boyfriend watch this movie. Uh, th don't touch this movie, okay? Look, maybe I dissect movies a bit too thoroughly. Like, I look way too deep into them. But at the same time, it's like, I can't help it. Like, that's all what's going through my mind the whole movie. These characters are really, really egotistical. They only care about themselves. And they don't care about the other people around them. I don't know. I did not like this movie. I think this is like the first time I'm passionately hating a movie on this channel, but... Fuck. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I'm trying to understand why girls like this movie, and I think I know why. It's because, um... Girls like it when guys, hot guys, obsess over them. You know, that's why people liked Twilight. Because Edward, he's a handsome dude, and he was obsessed with Bella. He was all over Bella. Girls just want to be obsessed over, you know? And Ryan Gosling in this movie is obsessed with Rachel McAdams. He builds her a house, uh, builds her a little studio so she can paint, uh, takes her on boat trips... Reads to her when she has dementia. Girls just want to be obsessed about, you know? And a little bit of that is because of the society we created. You know, it's hard out there to be a girl. Like, it's so competitive nowadays to be a girl. Everyone's, like, taking Instagram pics, taking snaps, shit like that. Uh, so we're a little to blame for that behavior on behalf of women. And uh, I do assume some responsibility over that, I guess, as the male sex. But uh, it still doesn't. Uh, it still doesn't excuse a movie like this getting made. I think this is like a, a stupid movie. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oof, not a good watch and not a good finale to Garage Loveathon. Thank you for joining me on this Garage Loveathon. I'm hoping you enjoyed it. Might I recommend Lost in Translation instead of The Notebook? Lost in Translation, excellent romantic film. Yeah, not so much The Notebook.